we go to Germany, where the agriculture sector also plays an important role in the economy. Not surprisingly, production there is becoming more and more modern and high-tech. Milking robots and drones above the fields are part of daily life. But now a new intervention could be added, a robot in the field. Tell us more, Neota. It's a prototype, Sandra, but it could make life far easier for the farmers in the future. The idea is to farm using fewer people and thus save on resources. In the end, it may just be the key to help feed our growing population. Let's have a look. Here in this field, a prototype is being tested. The hope is that this technology will be able to combat weeds and improve harvests. Meet Bonnie Rob, a robot that works for organic farmer Heine Carstens. I think I'm a visionary in this operation because I'm trying to foresee the problems we'll have in a decade and I'm doing my best to solve them. The farmer's already having problems finding enough employees to work his fields. Bonnie Rob could solve this labor shortage by recognizing weeds and destroying them without relying on chemicals. But the robot is still at the learning stage. The farmer has brought in IT experts to help. You can imagine drawing a picture with a green marker and a red marker. And then we tell him, that's a carrot and those are weeds. And later we have pictures without anything and tell the robot to find them. Where would you use the color red or green? And this is what you see in the end. It examines all the images and says, you're a weed. Artificial intelligence for farming. Nowadays, farmers also have to be engineers and software experts, able to hook up heavy-duty farm machinery to networks. Those networks collect and analyze data, so farmers can optimize the use of seeds and fertilizer. It's providing a new line of business for agricultural machinery engineers. Someday we'll have to feed 9 or 10 billion people, and that won't be possible with current yields. We have to become more efficient, and we have to use our resources more wisely. Research and practice are closely interlinked. Fuel efficiency tests, for example, are being conducted at the farm where Kai Anka himself learned his trade. This is the route I have just programmed. The tractor follows that route. There's no need to steer. Satellite maps help the machinery stay exactly on course. But it also makes it possible to track an employee's every move and spot every mistake. Digital technology is very useful for looking after livestock too, helping to boost profits. Feeding has long been automated. Anker says farmers should still visit their animals at least once a day. We currently have 2,000 pigs, so feeding them by hand is inconceivable. It's good to have fully automated feeding. Back at the carrot field, the vegetable crop is being separated from the weeds by hand. At least it's environmentally friendly. The vehicle is powered by solar panels. But it's difficult to find workers willing to pull up weeds for eight hours. When will this work be automated? We know that in the long term we won't have these workers anymore. So we need the technology to help keep the weeds on our fields in check. There's a big demand for big visions. Farming can benefit greatly from digitalization. Our dream is to come here with a small trailer, open the door, and then a hundred drones fly out and around the field and do everything automatically. Everything depends on the new technological possibilities and how we exploit them.